Remember the anticipation of setting up your first Commodore computer, taking it out of the box, flipping through the manual, connecting those junky power supplies, your first ready prompt on the screen, wondering, what do I do next? You can relive those moments today with the Mega 65. Next in the Retrocombs Mega 65 User's Guide series, we channel that nostalgic feeling. It's time to cover Chapter 2, Setup. In Chapter 2 of the Mega 65 User's Guide, we're covering the essentials, unboxing, connecting peripherals, and the exciting first power-up. So grab your manual and let's get your Mega 65 ready to compute. Unboxing your Mega 65 is a fun experience and I shared my unboxing experience during a live stream. You can watch that live stream and my first reactions by clicking on the card above. Go check it out now. I'll be here when you get back. Six and a half hours later. All right, thanks for returning. What you noticed while watching this video was that the box includes these items. The Mega 65 computer, and if your box didn't include one of these, you've got troubles. It includes a power supply. The team even includes various plug adapters for your neck of the woods. The Mega 65 User's Guide, the book you are using to follow along with me in this series. Your personal registration code, probably inside the user's manual, but be careful, there's a code on the back that you don't want to share online until you have used it to register on the file host at files.mega65.org. There's also an SD card that's pre-installed, but leave it alone for now. We'll learn more about it in chapter four. Now there are some additional items you will need, including a CRT monitor or TV for those retro scan line vibes or a modern HD display. Either must include a VGA port or a digital video input, also known as HDMI. The display must be capable of displaying an image at 480p or 720 by 480 at 60 hertz for NTSC or 576p 720 by 576 at 50 hertz for PAL. If you use a VGA display, you will need a three and a half millimeter cable and a set of powered speakers. Stereo is preferred. An SDHC micro SD card between four gigabytes and 32 gigabytes. You'll need an RJ45 ethernet cable and eventually something to connect to the other end more later. A CR2032 battery for that real time clock. A Phillips head screwdriver because yes, it is okay to open your Mega 65 and is required for some tasks. You'll need a nine pin DIN joystick. I recommend a readily available $16 Hyperkin Trooper if you don't have one lying around. Also a Commodore 1531 mouse, an Amiga mouse, a Mouster USB mouse adapter, or a tank mouse, those are great. Eventually you'll want to give Geos for the Mega 65 a try. Here's the good news. You have time to pick up many of these items. The only things we need for the first few chapters are a display with sound and a Phillips screwdriver. I'm sure you have both of those in your home right now. Not sure where to purchase, I have links to everything you need in the video description below and on my Mega 65 resource page. That link is in the video description below as well. Before we connect any peripherals, let's take an inventory of the connections on the Mega 65 beginning with the rear of the computer. And on the back of the computer, we'll find a three and a half millimeter audio jack so you can connect those powered speakers. An external micro SD card slot, we'll use that internal and included SD card for now. A network LAN or ethernet port, no Wi-Fi on the Mega 65 out of the box, but stay tuned for an expansion board that might include this feature. There's a digital video connector, also as I mentioned earlier, known as HDMI, a video connector to connect to more retro monitors. You'll notice no composite out, that too is coming soon with the release of an expansion board. There is an IEC serial bus connector, so you can plug in devices such as an original Commodore disk drive, printers, modems, and other devices such as a Pi 1541. You'll find on the back a cartridge expansion port you can plug in and use those C64 cartridges. Unfortunately, there's no Mega 65 cartridges at the time of this video, but let's keep our fingers crossed. There's a power supply socket that's 12 volts DC, and I recommend you stick to this power adapter to better protect your Mega 65. Let's look at the side connections. On the left side of the Mega 65, from left to right, we find a power switch which toggles a hard reset or on off with a pleasing thunk. There's a controller port two, sometimes referred to as joy two for mouse or joystick. And then there's also a controller port one, sometimes referred to as a joy one for also a mouse or a joystick. There's a reset button. You can soft reset with a tap of the momentary button. 
On the bottom of the computer is a single trap door that provides access to the internal SD card. A little bit more on that later. Before we power on the Mega 65, let's install a CR2032 battery into the real-time clock, or RTC. Why? The RTC allows your Mega 65 to keep track of the time and date. This is useful to display date and time on the startup screen, use accurate date and time across programs, and to add timestamps to files written on the SD card. You'll notice the Mega 65 team does not include a battery in the box. This makes international shipping easier for the team. Now here's a note, my Mega 65 had an RTC bug. It simply didn't work. The Mega 65 team came up with a slick solution, an add-on RTC. You'll see it in my videos, and I wanted to explain it before someone asks about it in the comments. And you will ask about it in the comments. Before you insert the battery, ensure the Mega 65 is off. Grab a Phillips head screwdriver and remove the screws from the bottom of the Mega 65. Now here's a tip, I never put the screws back into the Mega 65. I find it easier to access the internal SD card than to use the trap door on the bottom. Now slowly open up the case. The user's guide mentions removing the keyboard cable. If you are cautious, you can simply fold the keyboard over the top of the lower case. Inside you'll find a slot for the battery. Insert a fresh battery and place the keyboard back on top of the bottom of the case. Again, you can choose whether you want to use the screws or not. We'll learn how to set the time and date after we boot the Mega 65 for the first time. Now let's connect some devices to the Mega 65. Let's connect the minimum devices needed to get started. And the first thing is to connect the Mega 65 to any size modern television or monitor using an HDMI cable connected to the computer's digital video connector. Connect a joystick with a nine pin DIN connector. Connect the power adapter barrel jack to the Mega 65 and then to a powered outlet. You'll notice there are still lots of unused ports. That's okay. As your knowledge of the Mega 65 increases, you'll learn how and why to use those additional ports. All right, take a deep breath and flip that power button. If all went well, you will see the onboarding screen. Hey, and if you hit a snag, don't panic. If you don't have a signal, double check your monitor connections and make sure you've selected the right input on your monitor. Are you having some strange behavior? Try reseeding the cables. And if in doubt, a power cycle can often fix those little quirks. Hello, IT. <laughs> uh, I, uh, something's wrong with my computer. Have you tried turning it off and on again? No, 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 no. Oh dear, thanks. Still nothing? The Mega 65 community is your lifeline. Ask for help on their forums or the Discord. Now, the Mega 65 boots up to a configuration screen where you set the time and date on a real-time clock. Change the video display mode, test the audio, and choose whether or not you want scan lines. While you won't see this screen again, we'll use another tool later to make changes that we set initially. Now here's another fun little tip. If you must, you can return to the onboarding screen at a later time by doing the following. Hold the Alt key down and turn on the Mega 65. Choose option one, configure Mega 65. Cursor right to done, select exit and reboot to onboarding. Power cycle the Mega 65 and the onboarding screen will reappear. Now you can set the time and date on the RTC by using F3 through F13. F3 will set the hours. F5 will set the minutes. F7 sets the seconds. F9 sets the day. F11 sets the month. F13 sets the year. Hold shift in any of these keys to reverse the direction of the changes so that you don't have to cycle through all of them over and over. Next, we can set the video mode. And you can do that using the tab key, which cycles through video mode options. Use the space to set the selection and confirm you wish to test the video mode. Using K keeps the video mode. And now there are four video modes available. There's DVI, no sound, NTSC, 60 Hertz, where you can bring your own powered speakers with that three and a half millimeter audio jack. There's also DVI, no sound, PAL, 50 Hertz, Enhanced with sound, NTSC 60 hertz. Enhanced with sound, PAL 50 hertz. Don't worry if your screen doesn't display properly, the screen will revert to the previous mode after 15 seconds so you can make another selection. You can also test the audio by pressing the A key and you'll get an audio sample. Do this to make sure your audio setup works properly. 
There's also CRT emulation. For our example, we connected a modern display to the Mega 65. However, back in the day, most folks connected their Commodore computers to cathode ray tube televisions or CRT. CRTs used horizontal scan lines that were visible to the user. Some Commodore software took advantage of these scan lines to affect game appearance, and many users turn on scan lines to maintain a true 1980s look and feel to their 8-bit games. You can enable or disable CRT emulation with a simple tap of the C key. Note that the screen will dim when you use CRT emulation mode. Now, once everything is correct, you can save the selection by hitting return on the keyboard to save the changes and exit the screen. We'll learn how to change these and many other settings in chapter four. For now, it's time to enjoy some software. The Mega 65 comes with an intro disc. After you save the changes to the onboarding screen, version two of the Mega 65 intro disc will load the demo menu. The introduction disc is a collection of Mega 65 software created by the community. Heck, I even have a few titles on there. You'll find all kinds of software from games to demos to productivity to utilities. And here's a tip for you. If you don't have version two of the demo disc, you can download the entire intro disc contents on the files host at files.mega65.org. On the menu of the intro disc, you'll find the following options. Disc 01, all the applications from 2022. Disc 02, all the applications from 2023. And disc 03, all the applications from 2024. You also find an option to disable the auto boot to menu system by hitting D. The forward slash exits to basic 65. If you disable auto boot, powering up the computer will display the Basic 65 screen. Basic 65 is the version of Basic that comes with the Mega 65. We'll talk about that later. I'll tell you what, let's take a look at a few of the titles available on the demo disc. That's quite a selection now. It's your turn to take some time and have fun playing games and demos and checking out some of the new applications so that you can learn more about the capabilities of your Mega 65. Before we end this chapter, let's talk briefly about the Mega 65's Basic 65 screen. On this screen, you'll see color bars at the top left 
and in the top middle, information about your Mega 65, including copyrights, ROM version, more on ROMs later, as well as the date and time from the RTC if you set that up properly. Below, you'll find the ready prompt followed by a flashing cursor. This is where all the magic happens, and this brings us back to the beginning of our video, the joy of wonder. What's next? What can I do with that ready prompt? Well, here's a sneak peek. We can use this area to type characters, issue commands in immediate mode, program in basic, and if we type the monitor command, you can even start to program in assembly language. Hold tight though, we're gonna to get to all these topics in future chapters. And with that, your Mega 65 is ready to explore. Setup is only the first step of your Mega 65 journey. In chapter three, we'll learn more about the keyboard, the screen editor, the freezer menu, and how to run Commodore 64 software. Hey, want to ask questions, make suggestions, and get additional insights? Visit my Buy Me A Coffee page so you can learn how to join my Discord. I've created a separate channel for this series so the conversation can continue, and the only way you can join this conversation is to support the channel. You can get access to the Discord by joining at the Commodore VIC-20 level for only $2 a month. Of course, I have other Commodore-inspired levels with additional perks, so be sure to check those out too. See you next time, and before you leave, check out this chapter one video if you missed it, and my introduction video to the Mega 65. Hey, see you next time, and at the next chapter, Retrocombs out.